everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be diving into the new foundation that was recently launched from House Labs. It seems like House Labs revamped the entire brand. I bought a few things from the first launch. Remember when Lady Gaga introduced House Labs? I don't know, maybe like two years ago now? I don't know, time flies, you guys, but I bought a few things and I just wasn't all that impressed. I think the only thing that I liked was the eyeliner. The eyeshadows were exceptionally dry and I didn't really love a lot of the products that I got. So when I saw that they were revamping, I felt like that was the right decision. They recently launched a bunch of new products. From what I've seen of their launches thus far, I think they nailed it. So I was really intrigued and excited to pick up this foundation and test it out. Before we jump into the information about the foundation, up here on the screen is an image of my age, my skin type, my skin concerns, and what I like and what I dislike when it comes to foundations. I feel like it's really important for the audience to know what the person behind the camera likes and dislikes, especially when it comes to complexion products. I will also list this information in the description box down below, along with popular foundations out of the market and what shades I wear in those foundations. In case you guys are close to my complexion, you can use it as a reference. I've been testing this for probably about five or six days now. I've wore it with several different primers. I've applied it several different ways. I've powdered it. I've wore it without powder. I have been really putting this foundation to the test and I've wore it for up to 15 hours. So I really know how I feel about the foundation. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a six hour daylight check-in where I take you guys outside, zoom you guys in real close so you guys can see how the foundation is looking in natural daylight. And then I will also do a 12 hour check-in where again, I zoom you guys in real close, let you guys see how the foundation wore 12 hours. And then in my 12 hour check-in, I will get into my final thoughts about the foundation. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into the information. So this is called Triclone Skin Tech Medium Coverage Foundation with Fermented Arnica. It retails for $45 and it comes in 51 shades. Now, the thing that I do like about it is it does have a good shade range. The majority of consumers are probably gonna be able to find a decent shade in this foundation, so I appreciate that. This is being described as a medium coverage weightless foundation with, with fermented arnica that reduces redness, helps even skin tone, and protect from environmental stresses. This is also a vegan, gluten, and cruelty-free formula. It is made with 20 plus skincare ingredients. This proprietary formula delivers ultra comfortable long wear performance without compromising your skin. It's weightless serum like texture seamlessly blurs texture and pores for a natural skin like finish that wears for 12 plus hours with no slipping or caking. So that's kind of the claims behind the foundation. Let's go ahead and dive into the shades. This is where I was a little bit on the struggle bus, you guys. Bear with me. So I typically buy my foundations in a medium with a warm undertone. Typically, warm undertones are golden, yellow. Sometimes brands will slip it in with like a golden olive undertone. You'll see that sometimes in warm undertones. I went on the Sephora website and I looked for the medium warm shade. I went ahead and found 310 medium warm. But the description of this, it says it is a medium with a warm, soft, rosy undertone. Typically, rosy pink reds are not in the warm category. So I foolishly maybe thought it was a typo error. You guys, I don't know. I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna go by the description. I'm just gonna buy the medium warm and call it a day. Well, the description of the foundation was correct because this is straight up rosy red. It is the exact opposite of a warm tone. I don't get it, you guys. I don't get it. So this is 310 medium warm and it is a pinkish reddish color. I do not have a cool undertone. So this shade looked terrible on me. I did wear it for three or four days before I got this other shade. It didn't look right. The undertone was off and you can clearly see that it was too red and too pink for my warm complexion. So I went ahead and went back on the website and I was like, wait a minute, but I mean, you can see as it's drying, it is straight up pink. This is not warm, you guys, this is cool toned. So I thought, well, this is such a cool tone. Let me go and let me go and look and see what the description of the medium cool tone is. Well, 330 medium cool 
is a medium with a cool golden olive undertone. My mind was blown. How is a golden olive undertone being in the same category as a cool tone? I don't get it, you guys. I don't get it. I was gonna buy that shade, but I decided not to. I just went ahead and bought 300 medium neutral, and this shade matches me so much better. You can clearly see that this is a pink cool undertone. I mean, look at those shades, you guys. I've never seen a brand describe warm and cool tones that way. They're completely opposite. I don't know if that's happened with everyone else, but I will apply shade 310 so you guys can see just how red it is on me. And then I will also do another application of the shade 300 so you guys can see that it is definitely a better match. If you guys have ran into that same issue in your shade range, Let's have a conversation about it because I don't know if it's just in the medium category. I don't know if it's in every category, but they completely got those swapped. So just FYI, if you're looking at buying the shade, read the description of it. Don't buy it based on the shade name because the description is accurate. We'll swatch these two shades next to popular foundations out on the market in the medium category so you guys can see how these two shades compare. So with all of that out of the way, you guys, let's go ahead and jump into the two applications and then I will do my six hour daylight check-in. Then we will get into the swatch comparisons and then I will come back later on this evening and we'll get into my 12 hour check-in and also my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this new foundation from House Labs. My face is much lighter than my body. P.S. I do put fake tan on my body, but I don't put it on my face. And my face is lighter because I did have a chemical pill in March, which by the way, worked great, but it lightened my skin. This is the shade Medium Warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend that out with a brush. It kind of feels like a serum type of foundation. Yeah, I think I'm gonna struggle with this shade. I feel like the actual shade itself, like the level of shade is good. I think the undertone is a little off. Now, I prefer to apply my foundations with a brush and smooth them out with a sponge. So that's how I'm gonna do this one. And it doesn't have a fragrance, so not that I can smell. So for those of you that do not like fragrances in your foundations, that's a good thing. Yeah, this undertone is kind of reddish, kind of peachish. It's a little bit weird. I don't know that I have anything like it. I don't think it matches my skin at all, but we'll see, you know, sometimes, Undertones will kind of change and kind of warm up to your skin. We'll see how it works, but I really like the finish of this and I like how smooth it is. It kind of blends, you can see that undertone is weird, but I like this uh, texture of this. It kind of feels like a serum foundation. It feels really nice on the skin, it does. Maybe I need to try a neutral. Yeah, that shade is off. This is definitely giving me a cool tone look to my skin. It's more red, more peachy kind of than warm. That's it for this application. I might switch the shades and maybe get a different shade and come back on camera. I'm just not sure how this video is gonna go. But for now, that's it for this application. I will see you guys all in the next segment. Okay, so I've been testing the foundation for a couple of days. I wanted to pop on camera really fast and show you the application of the new shade that I picked up. Like I mentioned in the intro, I the undertones are wonky in this foundation, but I decided to buy the neutral tone and it looks really good. I've applied this foundation several different ways and I prefer it with a brush. I feel like I just get a more smooth, kind of even application that way. So I've just put a pump of it down here on my hand 
and I'm just gonna start applying it. But you can see that it matches, like see how I just blended it into my chin? You really can't even see where the foundation is. This shade is really close to my natural skin tone. Now, I don't put fake tan on my face, but I do on my body. It's wearing off right now. But this shade is really close to my natural skin tone. And interestingly enough, this shade, being that it is described as a neutral tone, this is a little on the warmer side. It is, you can kind of see the gray in it as far as the neutral goes, but I would say it's a warmer neutral. So it still has those neutral tones, but it does have a little bit of warmth in it. And then once I've applied it, I pick up whatever's left on my hand and I just like to press it into the skin with a sponge. Applying it with a brush provides a nice even application where I'm not using too much of the foundation and then kind of pushing it into the skin with a sponge kind of gives you that real natural finish. The one thing that I will say about this one is I have gotten a little bit heavy handed with it over this area, which my chin is kind of the area that I watch for when I'm reviewing foundations, because if it wears bad along my chin, it's not gonna wear, it's not gonna be a good foundation for me. There's been, I mean, I've been testing this now for five or six days. I think two of the days that I tested it, I did get a little bit heavy handed with it. It was with the other shade, the 310, but it didn't look and wear that well in my textured area. So kind of keep that in mind. This is just not one, number one, you really don't need to use a lot of it because it does provide a nice medium coverage. And number two, just be careful going over texture and especially over like wrinkled areas or, you know, right here is more of like an orange pill area, you know, that type of thing. Just be careful going over those areas with too much of this foundation. If you feel like you might have gotten a little bit heavy handed with it, go in with the clean side of the sponge and really push it into the skin and pick up anything extra that might be sitting in that area. And that will allow it to wear so much better because this foundation provides a nice shine to the skin, kind of that healthy glow, but it also sets down where it's not gonna be a slip and slide all over the face and you can touch your face throughout the day and not have to worry about picking up the foundation. Okay. So I am done with this application. I'm gonna be doing my wear test today. So right now it is 10.40 in the morning. So I'm gonna go about the rest of my day and I will definitely be doing some daylight check-ins and I'll come back later on this evening to do my 12 hour check-ins, which will be my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Okay, so I am back to do a midday check-in on this foundation. Right now, it's almost five o'clock in the afternoon. So I've had it on for just over six hours, in between six and seven. I'm sitting out here on my front porch. It's a nice sunny day. Let's go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see how this foundation is looking. Let's zoom in on the forehead first. I have lost a little bit of the coverage right along here but not bad, it's a lot of that happens because I do this, right? Like, just kind of is what it is. But it looks really good along my chin, which is the area that if a foundation's gonna look bad, that's the place that it's gonna look the worst. It looks really good over here and over here on this side. It looks really good. The, the other thing is you'll notice that it's set down so it's not pulling apart right here in the center of my face. Sometimes that will happen. It's looking really good around the nose. I've maybe lost a little bit around here, but not bad. Yeah, I think this looks really good. So far, so good. I did powder. I did wanna mention that I did put on a little bit of setting powder just to kind of control the shine throughout the day. But I've wore this with and without powder. I prefer the powder with it. Without a powder, it doesn't seem to last as long as it does with powder. But 
I only use a tiny bit of powder. It's not like I use a lot of setting powder, but it does seem to hold up a little bit better with setting powder. So that's it for this quick daylight check-in. Let's go ahead and jump into the swatches and I'm gonna swatch both shades 300 and 310 next to a bunch of other foundations that I have in my collection so you guys can see how those shades compare. Then I will come back and we will do my 12 hour check-in and I'll zoom you guys in real close so you guys can see how it's wearing and in my 12 hour check-in I will jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Okay, so I am back to do my 12 hour check-in. It is almost 11 o'clock at night, so I've officially had the foundation on for 12 hours. Let's go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see how it looks up close, and then I'll jump into my final thoughts. So let's start with this side. You can see that it really has not changed much. This foundation wears beautifully. I have lost a little bit of the coverage right around my nose, but that's to be expected. I mean, it's been 12 hours, but it looks so good, like right along here. It's held up so well, and I would say the coverage has faded a little bit, but it still looks really good. The one thing that I wanna notice is that it hasn't pulled away. So you can see that I have a shine to my skin, so the powder has kind of worn down. You know, my natural oils have come through, but it hasn't separated. So that's one thing that I do not like about foundations is when they separate. And this one is stayed intact. I haven't really lost that much of it, to be honest with you. I think it looks really good. I think it's held up really well. It feels really good. It doesn't feel like I have makeup on, which is one thing that I have experienced the entire time I've been wearing this foundation. It never feels like I have foundation on, but I think it still looks really beautiful. This foundation is almost undetectable, which is one thing that I noticed as this foundation wears, especially if you get a really good shade match to your complexion, as you're wearing it, you won't even feel like you have foundation on and you won't look like you have foundation on. So that's it for the check-in. I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera back on the big tripod and we're gonna jump into my final thoughts. Okay, so I'm back. I went ahead and put the camera on the tripod. Let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts. I actually really like this foundation. This is probably one of the better foundations that I've tested this year. It kind of blew my mind how beautiful it is and just how natural it is. It lays so beautiful on the skin and the entire time I've been testing it, I never feel like I have foundation and even as it wears down, I can look in the mirror and I can't really see where the foundation is. And like I mentioned when I was doing the up close uh, footage, that all has to do with finding a good shade that matches your skin tone. Because if you do find a good shade in this, it's almost undetectable. It's such a beautiful, beautiful foundation. I'm kind of surprised to be honest with you. I didn't really know what to expect. And I think because there was some disappointments in her original launch, that I was a little bit skeptical about some of the products that were in the relaunch, but this foundation is kind of mind blowing. It's a five out of a five. This kind of reminds me of the Valentino foundation. It kind of wears that way. It kind of, it looks that way on the skin. It kind of has that shine, but it sets down. It's a beautiful foundation. And 
The other thing that I wanna mention is that I like this shade. I think it's a good shade for me, but I think I wanna get it a tad bit warmer. So I think I am gonna buy the 3, 330 medium cool. Just to see, the description of it is golden with like olive undertones. So maybe I'm gonna buy me a cool tone, but you could tell in the swatches just how pink shade 310 is. And I think that's the drawback to this foundation is the undertones are opposite. So I think as long as you know that going into it. Also, if you can, if your local Sephora sells this in store, I would do some shade swatching in store because <laughs> the struggle bus is real with this one, you guys. I don't get the opposites. I've never, I'm not, I don't understand the warm undertone being described as a cool undertone and vice versa. It doesn't make sense to me, but at the end of the day, if you can find the right shade in this, it's absolutely beautiful. Five out of a five, and I do, the one thing like I mentioned in the second application, do be careful with how you apply it. You don't need a lot of this. So a little bit goes a very long way. It has a nice medium coverage from the gate. So a little bit goes a very long way. Don't get too heavy handed with it, especially over the pores and wrinkles and texture and stuff like that. If you end up getting a little bit heavy handed with it, it will wear a little heavy throughout the day. But like I mentioned, if you feel like you got heavy handed, take a dampened sponge, take the clean side of it and go over top of it and pick up any extra that might be sitting on the skin and it will wear beautifully. This is a gorgeous foundation and I kind of feel like it's gonna work for a wide variety of skin types. So I think this is gonna be good for those who have dry skin and I think those who have oily skin can totally make this work. It's, it's that good. It, not only does it have an amazing shade range, but I think it also is very inclusive when it comes to the skin types. It includes a, a wide umbrella when it comes to the skin types. Five out of a five out of a five. This foundation is fantastic. This foundation is more radiant, but also sets down. It's one of those that looks like a dewy, but it doesn't act like it where it slips and slides and it's a mess all day. This foundation is a hard five, you guys. Like it's gonna be probably one of my favorites. Now I still love my Patrick Ta. I, I continue to use this and love it. This one I would say is a little bit more drying and you have to be way more careful when applying this one. A little bit goes the longest way. If you, if you end up getting even a little bit heavy handed with it, there is no leeway with this one. This one will wear heavy, but this one's definitely more drying than the House Labs. The House Labs is, it has more hydration and it kind of feels hydrating throughout the day, but it's not a slip and slide all over the face. So hard five, you guys. Don't sleep on this one. If you're in the market for a new foundation, this is a fantastic foundation. Other than the undertones being a little flippin' wonky, it's a hard five. So those are my overall thoughts. Sound off down below. How many of you guys have bought this foundation? And what is your skin type? And if you and do you love it or do you not? I'm always so curious to hear what your guys' opinion is. And like I've always said, your opinion matters just as much as anyone else's coming on behind a camera. So shout out down below. Let's have a conversation. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.